Nowadays, the theological debate revolves mostly around whether or not the world was created, or if it is a product of chance acting upon fundamental laws that govern chemistry, physics, and so on. What at first is clearly observed is that both sides of the argument agree in the same principle, that is, that it is indeed a creation. I affirm this because if one side states the Creator God created the world and ourselves, the other side saying that things were put together by chance while following fundamental laws, is already admitting that the fundamental laws therefore precede and take prevalence over chance itself, chance here being used by them as a replacement for the God entity as an agent. So whether realizing it or not, both sides of this argument actually agree on the creation principle. And if one side worships the creator entity, the other worships the creative principle behind chance. It surely looks as if it's uh, the same for both, under different denominations. What actually separates one side of this theological debate from the other is the degree of morality each of them follow. And note that here I am using the word morality as a describer for sets of values when looking upon the same creation. The Creator God side of the argument will present divine commandments that determine the morals to be followed by the created. This represents order. While the chance side will reject any predetermined commandments for the created, and will therefore fluctuate in terms of what values they use for their own decisions. This represents chaos. Ordo ab chaos. Order out of chaos. Where have we heard this or read this before? Hmm? What are they replacing? What are they attacking? We'll get there. Now, Allow me, please, to make this clear. Although I am implying that both these two sides willingly or unwillingly, knowingly or unknowingly, belong to the same cult, this does not mean that I am saying that there is no inherent morality. What I am saying is that neither the complete adherence to the moral commandments of the Creator God's side, nor the rejection of such commandments by the chance worshippers are true morality because they are written and made in the world and by the world. I will try to explain why I contemplate this. Firstly, a truly perfect being can only create perfection by inference. True perfection will not make mistakes, nor will it consider making imperfection, as that thought itself would be imperfect. Also, that which is perfect is always truth because any imperfection would, therefore, make it not truth and inherently false. Perfection does not change, because it is not a product of fashion of judgment, but an absolute. That is exactly why God is associated with the absolute, not the relative. That is not to say that there aren't whole pantheons of gods depicted as holding and contending with relativist views, but these gods are, to me, more describers for the principles guiding this created world, and not actually meant, in my view, to represent a solution to the puzzle of the world that is present before any authentic truth-seeker. You see, one can properly judge a myth by asking if the story it tells stamps the world into the mind, or if the story it depicts frees the mind from the world. The first has to be accepted and enforced, because a worldview cosmology has to be stamped into the mind, while the other does not need acceptance nor enforcement. It is naturally and eventually realized by the truth seeker. One is the prefect, the other is the perfect. Actually, it was my girlfriend who suggested this wordplay, and it is excellent to communicate the point. Thank you, Han. So going back to where we were, the perfection that was generated by the perfect is not put together, but made manifest in its entirety. In the metaphorical same way, a hologram contains the whole original image. 
and, by consequence, that perfection will emanate or generate more of its like. Some currents of emanationism believe that imperfection is brought about by the degradation of the original perfection as it moves away from source. However, the generated perfection is an individual representation or manifestation of the perfect source, and, being perfect, it is not subject to degradation or loss of quality. Again, we are discussing the realm of the absolute here. Degradation implies an inherent imperfection at the source, which would make it, consequently, not the perfect and not the truth, and, therefore, not the source. So, consequently, the creation or putting together of the imperfect comes from a different origin, from the perfect, or than the perfect. With that in mind, we can then understand that this world, with all its suffering, brutality and promotion of parasitism and exploitation by its nature, being an illusion that we only belong to as much as characters belong in a movie or book, cannot be a perfect generation of a perfect source, but from an imperfect origin, that metaphorical prefect. Most probably, that imperfect origin always existed as a counterpart to the perfect, as a shadow that is produced by light hitting an object. What object? How did it come to be placed between perfection and remain there? I do not have that knowing, and what is and how the object came to be is really not the subject of this contemplation. Does that mean that perfection and truth cannot manifest here? No. It means that what the nature of the world itself favors is the imperfect, because in the actual presence of the perfect, any imperfect prefect ceases to exist just like a vampire will dissolve under the sunlight in some stories. So, how does perfection or truth manifest in this imperfect world? It does so through immediate realization of a knowing, a connection. I keep repeating that the uh, true root of the word, uh, word religion is to reconnect. And that connection comes without time, without doubt and without interference. But, given that the receiver's body is intrinsically linked and belonging to an imperfect world, that realization can then be edited down for the comfort of the world character because it wants to continue existing in its composite, albeit illusory, form. After all, if ever faced with absolute truth, all that is not true would simply dissolve as it is not actual life. What does that imply, then, to have truth manifest here? Well, it implies that not all that is here is from here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to connect or understand, as it is actually the case with many of our fellow neighbors who are unable to connect and understand anything that is not from the world and materially represented, be them humans or animals. And if flesh and bones uh, humans would have been generated or emanated by perfection, they would have to be perfect themselves as a result, and so immune to degradation, and, among many other qualities, also immune to subjugation. So it is not humanity, particularly as a species, that is from outside the imperfect world of the prefect, what is actually alien to the world is the morality inherent to the realizations received from connections to truth, implying that there is an essence linked to some connectors in this realm, an essence that is perfect, an individuation of the source that came here to communicate to its lingering pieces those connectors that, being partially made up of the same absolute, are thus able to receive the message or let's call that absolute, uh, absolute essence, true God spark, just to make it more understandable, but words are just words, so whatever. So, it came here to communicate a rescue. That much is clear, because all messages point towards the need 
to hold a standard of morality that not only supersedes worldly urges, but also prepares the essence's departure from the realm of imperfect materiality. This goes again back not only to the latest contemplation named Christianity, where the existence of a pure source completely detached from history and materiality behind Christianity is discussed, but also to the various subjects already addressed in this whole channel. And I have to emphasize, do not take anything from me or anyone else's absolute truth, because it can never be so. I am human and, as you, consequently imperfect, as the language we use is too. Moreover, the puzzle is supposed to be put together by every individual. However, it is with the essence beyond the human, to which some of us are connected to, that the actual communication takes place. It is not emotional either, as emotions are mostly, but not all, generated by the animal body, but a transcendent communication well beyond the ability to properly describe it, being so alien to our animal, worldly, material minds. Yes, I seem to have used that word alien again, so purposefully popularized in our culture since the 20th century, as we were presented with a myriad of mythology surrounding physical, material species of creatures, reportedly from other worlds, invading our world with sometimes apparently benign and sometimes apparently malign agendas. Well, all I can say is that in my contemplation, I view these stories as a means to literalize that which should, to our essences, be sacred, just like stated in the previous Christianity video. If one receives a message and literalizes it, that is, fixates it as a material physical phenomenon, then it loses its original morality, because it brings it down to this world to a level in which the prefect can attack it, instead of elevating one beyond it closer to the perfect true source, at a level in which it would be completely immune. All civilizations that, albeit inevitably imperfect, given that they were in this world, strove to elevate our human creatures towards our pure essences, were protectors of this connection to our true source. This is why they have always been subject to attack and eventual pillaging by the materialists who, seeing the metaphorical alien trying to rescue hostages from their world, fight with everything they've got exactly because being entirely dependent on the energy provided by those very hostage essences, this world is all they've got.